happens and they implode and then explode. It's called a nova, or if it's a big one, it's called a supernova. It seems that about every 30 years a star explodes. Well, after searching the heavens, they've only found 300 supernova rings. So the question would be, if the universe is millions of years old, why aren't there more supernova rings, the remnants of these blown up stars? That indicates only a few thousand years. Of course, the Bible says God made everything 6,000 years ago, and the textbooks say it's billions of years old. I think the textbooks have a problem because there should be a lot more supernova rings. Plus, obviously, you have a problem. Stars being born should equal stars dying or else you're going to have a real serious problem. There are plenty of stars out there, but we've never seen one star forming. We see stars blow up every 25 or 30 years. We've never proven the formation of one new star. One atheist I debated said, oh, Hovind, there's this new star forming right now in Crab Nebula and some of the different uh, clouds out there in space. You see stars forming. No, you don't. You see spots getting brighter. You are assuming a star is forming. But actually, all you're seeing is a spot getting brighter. It could be there's a dust cloud clearing and there was already a star behind it. Any fourth grader would know that. So nobody's ever proven the formation of one star. Uh, in Science Magazine in 86, they said, the silent embarrassment of modern astrophysics is that we do not know how even a single one of these stars managed to form. Situation's no better now. There, nobody can prove any star formed uh, by natural processes. If dust tries to get together, as it increases in density, it increases the temperature, which increases the m movement, and it drives it back away. It's called Boyle's gas laws. You cannot compress dust into um, solid matter without creating a real serious physical science problem of overcoming the gas laws. The pressure increases, the temperature increases, which drives them out again. It's not going to happen. One professor said, oh, Hovind, we figured if 20 stars explode near each other, they'll produce enough energy to squeeze the gas and make a new star. <laughs> I said, well, sir, that's just brilliant. You know, you're saying if you lose 20, you can gain one. Man, you ought to run for Congress and help those guys borrow their way out of debt. You know, <laughs> that's a dumb idea. We've never seen it happen. It's purely theoretical that 20 stars could do that, but that is a losing proposition, not gaining. There are lots of stars. The Bible says God created the stars in Genesis 1.16. He created them to be lights on the earth. Psalm 147 says He counts the number of the stars and gives names to all of them. The Bible says He layeth the beam of his ch beams of His chambers in the waters, who maketh the clouds His chariot, who walketh upon the wings of the wind. It is possible that Psalm 104 ties in with Psalm 148 that there is still water above the heavens. Nobody knows what's beyond outer, you know, the stars.